The Orange County Fire Authority, Los Angeles County Fire Department, Ventura County Fire Department, and Southern California Edison in a joint venture have developed a new resource known as the Quick Reaction Force, or QRF, to better support firefighters' ability to control wildfires in Southern California. And that's that transition between initial attack into extended attack. Many a times, as we get the air tankers out there during initial attack, they start to make great progress, only to be diminished and dampered by the falling of dark, which has traditionally grounded those aerial assets. And that has traditionally meant the end to retardant lines being laid, which we know helps really slow down the fire, diminish the fire's growth, and allow us as firefighters to establish a strong foothold and gain access and uh, control of those fires. The QRF is a 24-hour-a-day aerial task force consisting of one Sikorsky S-76 supervision helicopter, two Chinook CH-47 helitankers, and one Sikorsky S-61 helitanker. The QRF is intended to act as a search force, supporting the jurisdictional initial attack aircraft of agencies tasked with fighting brush fires in the Edison Service Territory. Part of the RT-130 or the refresher is really to familiarize those initial attack, extended attack, incident commanders, ops chiefs, all those folks that are going to be operating out of the back of that vehicle early on. If they know that if they've requested an aerial task force and it happens to be the QRF, that an MRB is coming. Um, you don't get part of the aerial task force. You don't get part of the QRF. You get the whole package. And so the MRB is moving and it's coming. And if you don't have an area set up for it, you're, you're going to be paying for a resource that's sitting there in the corner. We don't break up the, the task force. Think of those tactical elements that bring suppression power to a fire. Your crews, your engines, dozers, and aviation. And all we're trying to do really in the simplest thing is locate the fire, get to that edge, get a person on the edge of that fire, determine if that's a good place to anchor that fire, and bring all your suppression power to bear at that point that you've determined to anchor the fire. And so in that, in that concept or that idea, you think about the effectiveness of retardant over water and the, and the holding power of retardant over water. And, and I, I like to think of it as, as uh, it's effectiveness in the same way you start out with a sharp chain, you start out, start out with sharp tools. It makes the water drops that much more effective per flight hour. And then also the long-term ability of the retardant after the water dries or after the water dissipates. In addition to having night flying capability and bringing large amounts of water to the fire, the QRF aircraft are also capable of delivering a long-term retardant, commonly known as FOSJEC. This material has been formulated to suppress fire intensity for long periods of time, which provides firefighters the opportunity to build control lines and put in hose lays for final control. This is a prime example of the kind of uh, collaboration um, and really integrated response that, that we need if we're going to be successful in what, in what we're dealing with. And it takes leadership from the public and private sector. And starting here in Southern California and, and seeing the work that, um, that this, this effort was able to really put together and paving the way for all those complexities that will always come, whether it's an agreement mechanism, whether it's the differences between state, local, or county policies and procedures, how do we start working through those before the incident occurs? The evolution of what the QRF brings us that when you can drop water at night, you can make a difference. When you can drop water with multiple helicopters in a row, you can make a difference. And now you take those multiple helicopters and you add in aerial resources and aerial supervisors like we have with our nighttime aerial ships with the Helcos and the ATGSs, and it makes a monumental difference. It's a game changer when you can load one aircraft after another after another, now dropping retardant. And we really are catching those fires that would have gone from initial attack to extended attack, the ones that we know were gonna outpace us because we couldn't keep after them at night with aircraft, we're now able to grab and we're now able to keep our arms around. So that's just evolution of the fire service. When we initially arrive on any fire, whether daytime or nighttime, the, the biggest thing I want is airspace, other aircraft to support the operation, and a close water source. The only thing that trumps all of that is a, is a close retarded dip tank for us. The ability for us to go and put retardant ahead of a fire in an initial attack environment is something we've never really had before to utilize on the rotorcraft side of the house in the nation. So it's pretty exciting for us to, to have this tool in our backyard 
and be able to employ it. Our drops stats are showing almost 64% more effectiveness with all of our drops at night. It's much more effective to have us continue with 24-7 ops with the three or four aircraft we have in the QRF program, being able to respond anywhere in the Edison territory. That's just a tool and, and something we've never had before to really utilize. On behalf of Southern California Edison, we appreciate and, and, and really value the partnership we've been able to, to help foster between the agencies and the company. Uh, paying the standby time uh, for, for this effort is kind of a, a turnkey for us. You guys are doing a great job figuring out uh, how this is going to work. Thank you to all of you and thanks for including us moving forward at events like this. We really appreciate it. FOSCheck starts as a powder and is mixed with water so it can be loaded into aircraft and spread over the landscape. The unit or apparatus that mixes the FOSCheck is called a mobile retardant base or MRB. The MRB is part of the QRF and is included on any fire where the QRF has been requested. And that's something that Premier Solutions is proud to continue to innovate and, and grow. Um, you know, with our team, uh, an unbelievable team that you see uh, around today, uh, running these mobile retardant bases that can be set up uh, in a matter of maybe 90 minutes. If a site like this is available, you're going to hear today, we need more ready sites that they can drive in and within 90 to 120 minutes be set up, pumping retardant and filling those first helicopters. That is the future of where we're headed with, with the MRB. All of our products are based on ammonium phosphate. The product we have here today with the uh, helicopter the QRF unit will be our 259X FX, uh, fugitive color product. It's the only product in the world that's approved for use from a fixed tank equipped helicopter. One package that's uh, called a Fosbin, that's one ton of powder. That one ton of powder when mixed with water will produce 2105 gallons of retardant product ready to go into the aircraft. In order for this chemical reaction to take place, it requires heat energy. We take away the heat and we take away the fuel. There we go, we're burning. And that's about the most aggressive angle of attack you could get for a fire. Go ahead and touch that right in the black, Ron. Instantly cold. And the other thing is that the majority of the weight of material is still there. I don't know if you noticed the ashes, it was blown away. There was less than 10% of the original material was left behind. That what's black there retains more than 75% of the original weight of material. So we're retarding once it's applied, it's good to go until we get a uh, significant rain or it's impacted by fire. And even after it's impacted by fire, you'll still have a little bit of the retardant left behind, a lot of carbon, like, like you can see on that burnt piece of strip there, the black, that's pure, almost pure carbon, which if you want to think about it in terms of what carbon is, like pencil lead or a diamond, you put as much heat to that as you want, it's never going to burn. The ability to utilize retardant in the early stages of a wildfire will have a profound positive impact on incident stabilization until ground forces can establish control lines. In addition, stabilizing the fire's behavior with retardant reduces risk to firefighters and can be applied to protect structures and other values at risk. The MRB is housed at the LA County Fire Department's Regional Training Center at Del Valle and is dispatched to support QRF aircraft. The MRB requires a predetermined and pre-approved location, the minimum size of a football field, with good approach and departure routes for the helicopters. It needs a water source capable of 350 gallons per minute and within 500 feet. It's the agency's responsibility to provide pumps, hose, or water tenders if alternate sources are necessary, such as lakes, ponds, streams, or distant fire hydrants. The MRB must be located 300 feet or more away from any waterway, lake, or stream. This is us evolving in the fire service. This is us learning from our mistakes. This is from us learning from the past, and this is us leveraging the future.